Hi, I'm Jake. I'm Ash. And today we're going to do battle. Battle! <laughs> so with our two click bots and the graspers, we're going to use the grasper to pick up the objects and put them in our box. Ready? Wait, 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 there's one more. Mm -hmm. So the point of the game is to be the first to reach 10 points, but you can't go over. So oh. maybe if I already have nine points and I pick up the three point cube, doesn't count has to be exactly 10 points to win. Nice, like blackjack, exactly. I like it. Let's do this. Okay, go. Uh, okay. Ooh. I'm making too far away from me. Ooh. One, two, seven. Oh, I need this three too. Ah, don't take my three. Ah. Uh. Uh. Did that count as three? Hmm? Look, I put a two in the, in the cup. <laughs> um. Okay, ten. Jake, how did you come up with this idea? You don't control Clickbot with itself instead of a phone app. That's genius. It's fun competition, isn't it? Yeah. It makes you feel like you are Clickbot. <laughs> you want to go to the lab and make it? Let's do this. The competition is fun, right? Yeah. It's like when we're doing it, we are ClickBot. Nice, let's get to work. Okay, so for this one, it doesn't matter what shape ClickBot is, we mm -hmm. just have to have the three main parts. Mm -hmm. We have the mount, the robot arm, mm -hmm. and then two different components for the controls. Vertically. So let me explain the whole control logic. So, our clickbot is finished. Let's figure it out how to make it move like that. Okay, so now we need to figure out the logic of the programming. Okay, so last time we used the joint as a sensor to detect how fast it turns. Last time, speed. This time, I guess, we detect the angle, right? Exactly. So we need clickbot to know the exact angle that each joint is at. Okay, I still remember last time we detect the rotation speed. Oh, right here. Now this time we can use detect servo angle of the joint function. In the actuators, I hmm, there are two blocks. So one is joint starts to move to function. The other one is joint move to a direction until the end. Uh, which one should we pick? I think we want the first one. So the joint starts moving. And that way, when we move the control arm, the reaction arm instantly moves. There's no lag. I see. So what I need to do is put this joint move starts to move to a function and put this detect servo angle of joint right here so that I create a perfect linkage between the control joint and the reaction joint. That will be a perfect synchronize. Perfect. Let's not forget a loop function here because we want to play for more than one time. So let's link the first group of joint together. So let's start with this one under the smart foot mm -hmm. and we'll pair it with this one under the grasper. Okay, so let me detect the first joint, which is this one. It's number five. The current angle is 189. And let me detect it one more time. When I turn it this way, clockwise, the value of the angle goes up. And when I turn it back this way, the value goes down. Okay. And accordingly, let's detect another joint, which is joint number 10. The current angle is 11. So when I turn it this way clockwise, the value goes up. And when I turn it counterclockwise backward, the value goes down. Hey, I, I found a problem, Jake. So when I continue to decrease the angle value from zero, it's not minus one. It's actually counting back from 359 again. Mm. That's actually not a mistake, that's normal. So when you start at zero, we have a circle, we're rotating, start at zero, and then when you move it forward, it goes to 12, 13, 14. Mm -hmm. When you move it backwards, and it gets to zero, back some more, it doesn't go to negative one. So the basic logic is, I will detect joint number five, detects the value of the angle, and put it in joint number 10, which is the reaction joint. Well, perhaps minus the difference, but I don't know how to do it now. And then 
joint number 10 will move to the same direction of joint number 5 is minus the difference, 178. So um, I guess we still need to compare the final result with if less than zero or not. So should we use an if clause? Exactly, yeah, we need an if and then an end statement. So let's go over the complete logic. So if the initial angle of joint number five minus the difference is less than zero, then the reaction joint number 10 will have to move in the same direction at the same value that number five moved, minus the difference, but then we need to add 360 to get a real number. That's the if statement. Else, else the difference doesn't go below zero, then that's the real number. So else, joint 10 can just move in the same direction at the same value that joint five moved in, minus the difference, and then we're good. No need to add 360. I see. And if your case is different, the logic will be if your calculation is greater than 360, you will need to minus 360 to have a real number. Else, you should keep the same. Okay, I'm familiar with if and else clause. It's right here. Okay, so let's start the programming. So first, if the joint number five's value minus the initial difference, which is 178. If this number is less than zero, okay. So joint number 10 moves to joint number five's value minus, this is 178, and we plus 360, right? Mm, exactly. For else, we just put an else under. And I'll just copy this whole block. Okay, I think I'm done. Let's check it out. Let me try. So forward, pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, and backward. All right, we're good, smooth. Okay, nice, we did it. So let's complete the other two groups of joints. Let's do it. finished yet we still have to do the grasper oh yeah so we're gonna use the pressure sensor and the smart foot to tell the grasper when to open and close mm. so this is the sensor when it detects the pressure of a certain number of newtons that we put when we push it it will tell the grasper to close okay let me program it it should be easy so first an if clause if the smart foot detects how many newtons for uh, you say two newtons right two newtons, okay yeah. And then the grasper will close. Grasper number 12. Mm, that's a big number. Okay, we'll grasp. Gra else. else. Else grasper stays oh, open. open. Yeah, sorry. Release. Okay. Okay, I think I have finished the programming. Whew, finally, let's test it out. All right, let me try it. All right, feels good. Immediate reaction. I think it's good, it works. Okay, let me give you some challenge. Let's Try to grab it. See. Here we go. Down we go. Not bad. It Not works. Not bad at all. Three, two, one. <laughs> yep. So, do you think we can use this idea and design to create more robots? I have another idea. Let's build two clickbot street fighters and try to fight each other. Okay. okay. Yeah, let's try. Okay. Are you ready to get knocked out? Too early to say that. Ready? Go. Let's go. Good avoidance. Oh. Oh. So t t today we we learned sensors. 
we learned uh, when the joint. Today we learned how to use a joint as a sensor. When the sensor can read the angle value of one of the joints, it can make the other joint do the exact same position. So ClickBot can control ClickBot. We don't even need the app, like pulling the strings on a puppet. Oh. <sighs> yeah. Uh, Jake? What? Okay, so more importantly, we learned the advanced coding skills. Have more ideas to use ClickBot to control by itself instead of using a phone app? Well, guess what? Please come to attend our weekend challenges to win some solid prize. So, until next time, bye bye.